Brian, some talk about the relationship between cosmos, cosmology, and consciousness. Most scientists would have consciousness being derivative accidentally of biology, which is an accident of uh, physics and chemistry. But those who talk about consciousness uh, as something more fundamental, maybe irreducible, uh, have it as part of the fundamental system of, of reality. You introduce the concept of biology in order to understand ultimate reality in addition to understanding consciousness or part of consciousness. I want to understand how that works. And I want to understand the importance of biology in understanding the structure of the cosmos. Right. Well, in fact, I think biology and consciousness are fundamentally linked in a certain sense anyway, because biology implies an organism and an organism is dealing with information in a certain way. And you might want to put consciousness into that, which I, I don't really because I don't quite understand how to talk about consciousness. Um, the reason why I want to put biology and possibly consciousness in is because it may give us an explanation of a kind that we can't get from regular physics. And my um, my starting point for this, if you like, is um, the idea of uh, John Archibald Wheeler that the observers are also participators and what he was talking about there is um, quantum mechanics deals with observation right. in a way which is somewhat unusual and um, implies some influence on reality okay i mean that's, that's certainly mm -hmm. a uh, a legitimate position um but uh but, but but how do you how do you make progress how do you go beyond that uh, uh particularly uh, how do you deal with with the issue that the cosmos existed for billions of years mm -hmm. until consciousness came along, at least that biology produced it just in the last uh, few million years, if, even if, if you talk about animal consciousness? So um, we, 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 uh, Wheeler just started off the idea that um, observers can uh, influence physics and we want then to go on... Um, we need to go on from there to uh, saying um, observers or biology can do more important things than that, which Wheeler didn't. Um, Hamilton and Penrose proposed that there were brain structures which were creating, um, acting in coordination and an orchestrated process of creating reality. Um, but I think it's um, that doesn't tell us how the universe begins. Um, there are lots of problems there, so I, therefore I propose that um, uh, something happening beyond the universe and on a larger and possibly infinite time scale has this organization and is doing things like um, uh, bringing a universe into, be be into being and setting up its laws and so on, and perhaps partly directing its evolution. So those are very big statements, <laughs> which you say very calmly and very uh, serenely. Uh, any one of which uh, could cause, uh, you know, uh, nuclear wars between uh, between scientists. Uh, so well, it's a scheme that uh, having a fairly clear scheme with various bits which fit nicely together, and um, uh, I think it's a more real approach from the um, M theories and so on, which are really just hypothetical anyway. That's yeah, a, a cer certainly that. Um, it would be said that the, there are physical theories of a standard model and being able to explain that so you can, you can, you can try to look for more and more fundamental things in a, phys in a physics. And, but you're introducing some radically new ideas uh, uh, it, it, to claim that Biology that life and consciousness is is so fundamental, uh, and y yet you don't you don't uh, rely on a, on a traditional religious arguments. Your arguments mm -hmm. basically have nothing to do with traditional religious arguments. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, I find that interesting that your, your arguments have come from a you know. A totally different perspective than others who may, you know, call that 
proto-consciousness or proto-biological creator of the universe, uh, you know, God? Uh, well, I think it's nice if the two can tie in together. And I've uh, been rather impressed reading books by Keith Ward that his picture, um, from the theological point of view, fits nicely with where physics would take you. Hmm. I, I think he he's uh, uh, would 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 be happy to hear that, but the question is 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 how is physics taking you there? How how does physics get you to that to that place where you see biology in such a pr primordial role? Well, it's in a way more satisfactory from the aesthetic point of view because uh, conventional physics you're putting all your bets on one particular rather complicated piece of mathematics. And people got into that mathematics just by trying to follow the same route as before, yeah. postulating symmetries and dimensions. And mm -hmm. they, they like it just because it's, um, it's the version of that which, which at least is not in disagreement with um, what we know. But on the other hand, it's assuming lots of things that we don't know, so that's just as theological, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, but we do know things about the mind, that it can do mathematics, create music, and be logical, and so on. So, uh, uh, which, by the way, is not really satisfactorily explained by conventional science. So if we take this biological point of view, um, and it's also cognitive, then we have these, um, well, we, we have general principles on which um, the um, mind develops um, which um, can partly be understood in models, and they fit with how we find um, minds actually developing. So there's a kind of um, well-defined basis on which to try and go further and, and put uh, mind into um, understanding uh, things like uh, why the universe has particular laws. So I'm, uh, admittedly I'm extrapolating, but it's not... not not too far. One can sort of <laughs> look along the line and <laughs> see how things might <laughs> might develop when uh, lots more effort has gone into developing the ideas. So, how then would you sum up the importance of biology in understanding the cosmos? Um, it's the fact that biology involves principles that we don't have in physics, and these principles might be able to unfold in. Uh, quite dramatic ways, um, extending our understanding of a, con of a cosmos. For example, what? W what, what specific uh, uh, properties of biology would lend itself to that? Because they lead to uh, minds, and minds can do things, and that, that's the logic. Uh, minds work out how, how to solve problems. They um, develop just as cultures develop, and they explore a world of ideas. And and from that you go from uh, a biology to consciousness and then that enables you to to feel better about the cosmos or, or gives you a reason for its its ex existence well it might uh, extend our understanding in uh, ways that are better than the way science extends our understanding <laughs>